love your best advice for that person who might be listening to the podcast and saying to themselves, I'm really not feeling rewarded at work right now, and I don't know what to do about it. You do know what to do about it. You just don't want to consider all the options. <laughs> and so I encourage you not to be like me and say, oh, well, I make too much money or the corporate vehicle is too much for me to give up or I've got this family that I have to provide for. And if I go do this other thing, then I may create pain for them. I'll never forget in interviewing a guy named Josh McCowan. And he had eight kids, I think, at the time. And he was like, I just can't make enough money in corporate, so I've got to start my own thing so I can provide for the my family the way that I would love to. And so everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur, and I don't want to paint that picture. But if you have this level of dissatisfaction, if you have this disdain for what you're doing, then you need to really spend time getting clear on what you want and then figuring out what it's going to take in order for you to be in a situation where you can have that. The world is counting on you to do the thing that's been placed on your heart. Your dissatisfaction is a signal that you need to make an adjustment or a change. It's almost like pain, right? And so it's a signal that you need to pay attention to this. And a lot of times all we do is we ignore it. We say, oh, I can get through it. I'll make it. But each time you're doing that, I think you can dig yourself in a deeper and deeper hole. And the thing I like to tell people is there's a voice that each one of us is being impacted by. We hear it, but sometimes we ignore it. And so it whispers in the beginning and then it speaks probably at your inside voice <laughs> at volume next. And then it yells at you. And if you still don't listen, then it picks up a two by four and it hits you <laughs> right smack dab in the middle of your face. And so you can avoid the pain of getting hit in the face by listening to the voice when it's whispering. You definitely want to pay attention when it's talking to you at inside voice. And if it yells at you, you better get in line because at the end of the day, you're going to be pushed into the direction. I tell people you either jump out the plane or you get kicked out, but you're going to go out the plane. So if the voice is directing you to do something, you probably want to do it on your own terms. And I also thought it was really interesting in, in the six levels of, of change that you that you coach people through that that personal health is really an important uh, thing for people. And I know that you spend a lot of time meditating every day and you take care of yourself, you exercise, you run six days a week. Give us some, you know, talk to that executive who's like, oh, I'm too busy to, to, you know, to exercise. I'm too busy to meditate. I'm too busy to do that. Yeah. The reason, so if you're too busy to take care of yourself, how can you take care of everybody else? And you just took a sip from your, your cup, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if your cup's empty, and it will eventually go empty because you're not putting anything into it, you're going to be of service to nobody. And I know that many of us have this ego where we feel like we're invincible and we can always do the things and so on. I've found just that it ends up being the ugliest wreck when we don't make sure that we're taking care of the one body that we get. We don't, we don't get to replenish this. And it's almost the same thing with our time, right? People will prioritize their money over their time. They'll prioritize their money over their health. And so health, and I love the way you're doing this interview, Mark, is level four for us. And, you know, it comes after we reduce the stress with work, relationship, and self-image. And we do health next because we don't want people to figure out prosperity and then have to give all their money back in order to buy back their health. Hmm. A person who is not well only has one wish. And that's to get their health back. And they will pay whatever price that it costs to get it back. But if you have it, it's your job as the steward to manage it, to maintain it, to improve it. And pouring it into another hour at work is not going to be the thing that anybody remembers. And you're certainly not going to value it when you're towards the end of life and your quality of life is poor because yeah. you didn't take care of the body. 
So the last two levels are prosperity and significance. And what's so ironic about this is that's where most people start, especially the prosperity. So to, to kind of wind things down, Jerome, what, what's your best advice for people who want prosperity and significance? Um, help us understand the best way to get there. Yeah. So the beautiful thing about the last two things is it is the end result. Most of us just see what somebody did at the end and we try to emulate the end result, but it's very much an iceberg. And so that's why the first four levels are necessary. And we walk people through that so that when you build that, it doesn't shake or crumble or fall down because you've got a poor foundation. Money is simply an amplifier. But when we think about prosperity, it's not just money. It's time, talent, and treasures, right? And it's another Venn diagram where you get all three of those things overlapping in a way where you can actually enjoy the fruits of your labor. You can actually use the talents that you've been blessed with in order to serve the world. And so we believe first, you know, you want to go in and make sure that you put your mask on first. So you, you've said they go to that first. I, I see really generous people who don't have the wherewithal to give the way that they're giving. And then once they give, they find themselves in a situation where they need to be given to. Right. So we want to give out of our abundance. So we want to grow our prosperity and we measure that with days off. Uh, the amount of revenue that we earn on an annual basis and our net worth. Now, we like metrics, right? So mm -hmm. engineer, you gotta, you gotta measure it. <laughs> and so we, we'd look to grow those. And then out of the overflow, out of our abundance, we give to others. And the goal there is to make it such that we can continue to give, even if we aren't writing a check year after year to do the thing. And so an example of that is, at my alma mater, we have a engineering scholarship that we endow for second year students that they can continue to earn as long as they're um, matriculating through school. And that full engineering scholarship pays for room, board, books. And the goal there is if you do well in your first year, you don't have student debt when you leave college. If we never write another check to the university, that will go on in perpetuity because of the way that it was set up because we endowed the scholarship. So our goal is to set up things that are self-sustaining and help people figure out what that is so that it truly becomes a piece and part of their legacy. And I think so many of us just create jobs for ourselves. We create a situation where we have to go out and fundraise and then it becomes a burden instead of a gift to the world. It becomes a burden for us or for the people we're asking to contribute to it instead of it being the true gift that we desired for it to be when we set out to solve whatever this worthy problem is. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I really think there's wisdom in that, that <clears throat> most of us start out trying to chase the money and thinking that that's the goal. But what you're saying is that if you do everything else right, the money is just a result of a life that's uh, centered. Jerome, any final uh, any final tidbits? This has been super fun. Um, what you know, I, I I guess I'd like to ask if you had to go back and give your younger self advice, yeah. what would it be? Yeah. Start now. We put things off, thinking we're not qualified, or we we. We can't do it because we don't have permission. And that's usually not true. There are few professions where you have to have specific training and pass specific tests. And there's certain amounts of time that you have to do apprenticeship type work. But for just about everything else, you can go do the thing that you want to do right now. And so start now. I, I look at the people who went directly into entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship shortly after university instead of wasting a decade and a half in corporate. And yeah, I learned a lot of stuff there, but my life would probably be pretty different had I started earlier on that journey. And uh, I, I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago and they were like, yeah, I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years. And it's like, man, you're so far ahead of me. 
and just being in the world of business and figuring things out on your own. And yeah, I, I, I think that is it. Start now, man. Like, what are you waiting for? It's available to you. Uh, technology has just leveled the playing field so much where you have access to information. You have access to an audience if you're willing to put in the work to build it. And so do it and do it now. Jerome Myers, it's been a pleasure spending some time with you. Hope we keep in touch. Thank you so much. Mark, this has been awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you.